Thank you. Thank you. I am honored to be here today, and <clears throat> we will get started. And I, I just want to go over and kind of, kind of set the ground where we're at, kind of set some background, and let you know kind of what Anderson County is about. And if I get good at this yesterday, it was here, so it's gone today. <laughs> we'll see. No, oh, maybe not. It's okay. It's okay. I'll get it. So Anderson County's vision, Anderson County schools will exemplify excellence and equity such as upon graduation, all students are equipped with the knowledge and skills to successfully embark on their chosen path in life. That path will change. I'm sure that you all are sitting here. When I got out of high school, and I'll tell my story as I go, when I got out of high school, I never wanted to go back. Didn't think that I would ever be in education. I would have bet you a dollar to a million dollars I wouldn't be standing here today. But God has, you know, God has a sense of humor, and he, things change. But I did know I wanted to work with my hands. I, so when I got out of high school, I went to a training program called TAT at Y12 then and became a journeyman machinist. Through that, my path changed. I got back into and I taught at this school and taught engineering and machining for 10 years. So I'll go on a little bit more of that later. Anderson County, we will develop, challenge, and support every student. Every day. Good job. You all learn good. I think they do. And, and, and we really and truly believe that. Every decision we make in Anderson County is about what's best for students. And I tell parents that. I tell parents that sometimes I have to make a decision that's what's best for 6,000 students. And it may not be what's best for your child that you think, but overall it's best for all of our students. So our beliefs, values, and expectations, we have I wish that would go here, but it's not here anymore. Wonder why, Ryan? Because the way they have these Oh. Oh, it's over on the other one. Okay, that's okay. I'll I'd like to move around, but I'll try to stay. It doesn't matter. Our main focus is to educate, as I say, every student every day. It's our main focus. Yeah. Person. All right. Can you tell we're from the eighties? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Where, I, I like it on this side better anyway. Tell me what I'm hitting. Oh, you're gonna hit the space bar in a minute. Okay. Not yet. Okay. Keep every keep students at the center of every decision making, looking for every opportunity to help make them be successful. We want our students to be successful. We want to make sure it doesn't matter, as one of my old colleagues says. The parents send the best they have to school every day. And when you get to school, we're going to take them where we're at and we're going to move them forward. Doesn't matter. Believe in the potential of all students and teachers. We can't have a mindset of this student is an at-risk student. This student is a special ed student. This student is an EL student. They're all students and we have to believe that they're all special and they can all they can all learn at a high level. Embrace our responsibility all students with great courage and integrity. We have to be willing to step out and do some things that probably we're not comfortable with doing. Yes. Promote success through the exchange of information regarding present Levels of performance, current educational issues, parent involvement, and student educational programs. We want to make sure that we give you, and we're going to talk more about it, that we give you time to grow. We don't expect you today to be a great teacher. We expect you to be a great learner. And a great learner will turn into a great teacher. <laughs> Stand as a team, listen and respond to others in an objective and productive way. We're all a family in Anderson County. We're going to have our disagreements, but at the end of the day, it's about what's best for Anderson County students. 
be on time, engaged, focused, and task at hand. This is for my principals and administrators when we're having our principals meeting because they have a million things going on and I have to get them back focused because they're trying to answer emails. And listen, we all multitask. I know how that goes. Balance urgency with patience. You're going to have some bad days. You're going to have some time that uh, things don't go your way. Just be patient. And maintain confidentiality. I'll talk some more about that in a little while. This right here, maintain confidentiality. You have to realize how many people are new to Anderson County or new to Tennessee this year? Anybody? Wow. Okay. So, so here's the deal, okay? If you don't listen to anything else, so if you go and you talk to somebody, okay, or you say something, or you, you, you're sitting with your friend at, at Harrison's or even McDonald's, anywhere, and you say, Johnny was just off the charts today. I cannot believe what that parent said to me, or I cannot believe how that parent dressed. Listen. Somebody there knows that parent, or they go to church with that parent, or their kids play ball with that parent, and the next thing they do is they call Ryan Sutton and they say, you got a teacher out running her mouth or running his mouth. You know, it, trust me, it happens every year. So just be careful. Because, and even if you share something with just your friends, chances are they're friends with somebody else that somebody else knows that parent. Listen. They love to gossip. <laughs> it's part of East Tennessee. I know something you don't know. I'm telling everybody. It's on Facebook. And here's the thing is, this is what's the most funniest part about it is, you, we will put something on Facebook that says, for instance, we have three days a year, we have what's called makeup days. It's the day before Christmas. It's the day before spring break and it's the last day of school. So makeup days, the buses doesn't run. Usually no kids are there. Okay, it's a time for you all to get. It never fails. The Thursday before or they'll, they'll say something. Well, we have no idea about it. But listen, if there's a sinkhole at Clinton High School, everybody knows about it. So they know, they know it, they just don't want to know it, okay? Hit it again. I, I just celebrate. That's oh, celebrate district and school success. We want to celebrate our students. We want to celebrate our staff. We do something called U Trust, and you'll probably hear more about that. But every month we celebrate a different group of people. And uh, the schools do it. We do bus drivers. We do custodians. We do teachers. We do everything. And then <clears throat> this year, because of COVID, we've kind of we kind of went away from things, but. This year we're going back the couple of Wednesdays before Christmas break. We're going to, we have a big celebration. We call it the 12 days of Christmas. And we all, as all the teachers meet uh, at Anderson County High School, we have a catered it, that afternoon. And we give away uh, about $20,000 worth of gift cards. Not, again, I have to make myself, not... Uh, from taxpayers' money. It's what we use, you trust, because we celebrate those months. This company that has our unemployment insurance, they take the money that they get off the investments and they send it back to us. So we get about sixty to seventy thousand dollars every year to celebrate our staff. So it's pretty cool. So here's kind of go ahead. I don't know. Oh, there we go. Well, it all come up at once, but that's fine. <laughs> so I'll, let me tell you about, again, my journey. I started, uh, my grandfather graduated from Clinton High School. He was on the 1936 football team. My dad and my mom graduated from Clinton High School. I graduated from Clinton High School in 1979. Uh, 
my children, one graduated from Clinton High School, two graduated from Anderson County High School. Uh, my daughter is in her 15th year of teaching at Anderson County High School. I have one student, I have one child student, I have one child that's a welder, I mean a welder. I have one child that is a electrician. I was thinking about welding this morning for some reason. And I have one that is an engineer that lives in Charlotte that is working on uh, new electric vehicles, which is pretty cool. <clears throat> I have five, six grandchildren. Four of those are in Anderson County Schools. Two of them are at Clinton Middle School and two of them are at Fairview. <clears throat> The one at Fairview is going into, going into kindergarten. He is hell on wheels, okay? <laughs> Just telling you up front, all right? If, if you're in that class, I feel sorry for you. But Kylie's mom, she's a, she's a, a, she works in that school, and she can take care of you. <laughs> they still spank in Anderson County. Not at the schools, but some parents still do. <laughs> but, but I say that because... I care about Anderson County Schools. I'm bought into Anderson County Schools. I want to make sure that our students, when they leave, they have every opportunity. Uh, my, my background, too, is I said, I taught engineering here for 10 years. I went to Clinton High School as assistant principal, came back here as principal, went to central office as director of secondary and CTE, career and technical education, and then I am starting my eighth year as director of schools. So uh, I still think I have something to give. I still like to grow. I still need to read more. I need to do more. And I still enjoy it. Uh, we have some exciting things on tap. We are going to build a new school in Claxton. About a $25 million thing. I'm meeting with some other people about buying some extra land today. We just built six classrooms on North Middle School. We do a lot of upgrades. Uh, just one of the things that you may not know, in Anderson County, every room has a ionized filtration system built into it. So every 15 minutes, every drop of air in this classroom is sucked outside, is cleaned, and put back in new air. So when COVID went on, guess what? We didn't have no student-to-student -student COVID interaction. We had one, we had one uh, building that didn't have it, and I think everybody in the building got it. So uh, it really helps. Now, that doesn't mean that if you're a new teacher, you will get sick, okay? <laughs> you're going to get everything that's out there because uh, it's just part of it, but you will get immune to it. And listen, after about three or four years, <clears throat> you can eat food off the ground. It doesn't hurt you. <laughs> it, it's just... You're immune to everything. But that first year gets a little rough. Uh, I do have an open door policy. Anytime you want, you email me, I will come out and meet with you. Uh, you can come to my office. You can text me. You can call me. I, I, I'm just that way. I'm just really and truly, I just want to be here. My job is to make your job better. My job is to meet with people and say, hey, here's what we need to make this school better. Uh, we have focus groups every year in January. We have focus groups that come and you all may be on one. The new teachers are always, we ask you a lot of questions. And we look at those and we have three things. We say what's going well, what needs to be tweaked, and what's off the rail. And we asked everybody, like I said, from custodians to cafeteria workers to our classified, everybody, we want to know how we can make our schools better. And we, and truly, we meet and we talk about those things. Some things, there's some great ideals that we've got out of it. One of them this year was the way we did the calendar. We had always did a calendar just in, I don't know, line form. And now we have two different calendars, which it shows you the whole year in a calendar and then it still has the just every line on it so you know hey it's color coded if it's I think if it's blue I have to work that day if it's red I don't you know so kind of make it easier for everybody uh, our district again with our school our website um, as you know in Anderson County we are one-to-one -one technology every teacher will get a laptop if you've not got your laptop this 
coming year is the year we buy new laptops. Every classroom has a, has a box light in it pretty much. Uh, there may be a few classes that we don't, but overall they're all in that. All of our elementary schools have these. Now they're working getting all of this, uh, I don't even know what it's called, but it's voice. Where, when you're talking in a classroom, it really makes a difference when the student in the back of the room can hear you and you don't have to be talk so loud. Uh, <clears throat> curriculum, we have a new math curriculum I'm really excited about this year. Uh, I wasn't excited when we spent $980,000 on it, <laughs> but it was something we needed to do. Uh, it's iReady. I think that uh, when we make those decisions, that was a teacher-led decision. Uh, we put groups together in elementary and middle school. High school is a little different. They're, they're a different. I already doesn't go to high school. But the teachers pick the curriculum, and that's what we have. We have to have buy-in with that. Uh, <clears throat> talk just a little bit about safety. Uh, you will, we have a badge-in system. Our doors, all the doors stay locked in our schools, and I'll, I'll go on with that a little bit and talk about some more of this. But... Uh, as we new teacher institute, I am excited about that because it goes to show that uh, Miss Portwood she put in this program that we have that we just started. Hey, let's do it, and now it's going to be a best practice for the state of Tennessee. So, the one thing I want to talk just a little bit about, and I know I'm going to run over with my time, but I'll, I'll try to. <coughs> We, we'll cut you off. About, about now it's been probably 10 years ago, we had this crazy idea that, hey, let's let the students go home two hours early every Wednesday, and we'll give time for teachers and staff to collaborate. And we went to the director of school uh, at that time, and he laughed at us. And he said, hey, no way you're going to, nope, nope, can't do it. You got to have snow days. You got to have this. You got to have that. I said, well, let us look into it, and can we talk with the state? So we wrote up a proposal, and I went to the commissioner of education. Then it was uh, Huffman and said, hey, I want to do this. I can prove to you that we're still going to do all of our time. We're still going to make sure everybody has, uh, has the success they need. But we want to give teachers every Wednesday, we want to give them two hours. So we did back up. So <clears throat> on Wednesday, it's, you do work over just a little bit. On Wednesday, about 30 minutes to 45 minutes over. Students leave an hour and a half early, and then you stay two hours. But it's compensated in the calendar. You get those days off at the end of the school year. So uh, it has really been a tremendous thing that we can do to where you don't have to uh, come in early. You don't have to stay late a lot. The elementary, you all stay probably more than anybody. But it gives you that time that you know every Wednesday we can't have them. What I call one-shot wonders is we have a great in-service and then life happens and then four months later we want to know why you've not implemented it. Or there's a concern about how this one uh, standard is taught and we don't have time to sit and, and look at the data and analyze it and say, oh, here's, here's a different way. This teacher did it this way, and they got better results. So it is a very good time to collaborate. That's built around four questions. Do we know what mastery looks like? You have to get together with everybody and know what that standard, the mastery of that standard looks like. How will we know if each teacher has mastered it? That talks about uh, co common formative assessment. Uh, how will we respond when students do not master it? How do we give them extra time? How do we build in that time for remediation? How do we build in that pre-learning that maybe we need to? And then the other one, how will we extend the learning for students who have demonstrated mastery? When students get bored in classrooms, they get in trouble. When we get bored, we get in trouble. You know, if I'm sitting at home and I don't have anything to do, I get in trouble. My wife makes sure I have plenty to do. But, but I think that happens when they get bored, then they get on their phones and they do all those things. So we want to make sure that we, that we can extend that learning. I'm almost done. 
So great teachers, never forget it's always about student success. It's always about that. It's always about student success. And that success doesn't have to be every time academic. It can be emotional. It can be social. Uh, we have a lot of uh, hurting kids. Everybody does. They come from uh, different backgrounds. They come from parents that are don't even care if they're there. They come from parents that don't show up. They come from abusive parents. They come from a lot of, uh, we have a lot of foster children. We have a lot of students, uh, parents that are living with their grandparents. We have some students that are living with their great grandparents. And as you know how that is, the older you get, <clears throat> the harder it is to make sure you've got that student in line. So we want to make sure it's about student success. Great teachers always set high expectations, clear and high expectations for the student. They have to know every day what you expect of them. And when, they, when you expect that high expectation, they will reach it. Great students set even higher expectations for themselves. Never get done. You, you will run out of time before you learn run out of a lesson. If you plan, and, because you'll always expect more out of them and expect more out of yourself. Never leave your students unattended for any reason. If Great teachers just don't do that. You can't leave them unattended. You can think that you have a class of 11th grade students that are in an AP class and they're going to do everything you do and they do when you're in there. Listen, they will get in trouble in 30 seconds when you're out of that classroom. Great teachers don't care about where the student comes from. As I said before, it's about student success. Don't put labels on kids. They will meet, though, if you put a label on a kid, they will meet that label. If you say that's a bad kid, they'll become a bad kid. It just happens. Create a positive atmosphere in your classroom and your school. Listen, here's the one thing, I, another thing. You got to have some fun this year. Listen, it can't be, and you're going to, there's going to be some grind that you're going to do. But you got to sing every now and then in the classroom. You got to jump around. You got to have some fun. Now, if you do that every day, then your vice principal is going to have a problem with it. <laughs> but it's okay to smile. It's okay to have fun because you've already set those high expectations. Great teachers build bridges, not walls. You have to build relationships with kids. You have to build relationships with parents. It's a whole lot easier to build that relationship on the front end with a parent when there's nothing wrong in the classroom and then when you call that parent and say, hey, Johnny had a bad day today. Can you help me with it? They're more apt to help you with that. Okay? I have to tell you a story. Okay? Everything works with a good story. So I was in <clears throat> assistant principal. Man, I, I, when they walked through the door, I knew... Chances are I knew what they'd done. I was already ready for them, you know. I, we had 1,200 students. There was me and two half-time assistant principals. Now there's four, okay? Just to let you know that. So I call this boy in my class in there. He's in trouble. I said, I want to call your parents. He said, Mr. Parrott, do not call my mom. I'm telling you, don't call. No, I'm calling your parents. I'm calling your mom right now. We're going to get her on the phone. Don't call her. I said, no, it's going to happen. Because I, I really and truly, I want to communicate with the parents. I thought, man, I'm going to do the same thing. So this was about a week into a new school year. I called her. I said, Jamie, I think was his name. I said, uh, I don't even know what his last name was. But I said, hey, I said, uh, this is Tim Parrott. And I said, Jamie's in my office and... Man, he's really just having a bad day, and 
and he's got in trouble in class, and buddy, she let out with about three big cuss words that were about this long, and she said, listen, I have put up with his ass all summer, and I never called you the first time. It's a week into school, and you already calling me? You deal with him. I hung up the phone, and he said, I told you, Mr. Barry, not to call. So sometimes you need to listen to the student, you know. But, but we handled it out. We handled it. It, it worked out all right. But, but sometimes, there, you know, that communication, what you're thinking that communication is going to be, changes. Always be professional. If you go to Walmart, if you go any place you go, you're going to see somebody, they're going to ask you questions. And listen, last night I had to go to Walmart about 8 o'clock because I had a commode tore up. I had to go get a, a new seal for the bottom of it, and I looked bad. And I was hoping, I, hopefully nobody, I come in the back door, I hope nobody sees me, nobody, you know, because that never happened. Hey, what's that staggered start we're having? <laughs> what do you mean? You know, my kid's a junior, and he's got to go to, uh, he's got an appointment on Tuesday. Said, they don't start to Wednesday, right? I said, no, they start on Tuesday. Well, he ain't coming. I said, okay. You know, <laughs> I just kept walking. But, <laughs> but, but you, will get, you will get those questions. And, and uh, it, if your Facebook's open, you will get all kinds of questions on it. So always be professional. Understand the power of praise. Everybody likes to be praised. Everybody likes to have, hey, you did a good job. I like it when Miss Smith talked nice about me. It wasn't true, but she still talked nice about me. No, people want that praise. And you have to figure out, maybe the only thing you can praise Johnny for today is he sat up straight in his chair. But praise him for that. Because the next time it might be, hey, Johnny, you got, listen, you only needed two more questions to have everything you needed on this test. So think about praise. And, and praise goes for your colleagues too. When you see somebody doing something good, lift them up. <clears throat> this is the one that will get you fired, okay? It happens every year. You've had a bad day and you want to just tell somebody about it and you put a student's name on there and next thing you know it goes viral. Please make sure that anything you do because you are a teacher now, you have no private life, okay? I'm just here to tell you. If, if somewhere you go, if you post a picture, there's going to be somebody else post it and just don't catch yourself in a compromising position, okay? because uh, it can if it affects the classroom and it becomes unprofessional. We've had to remove teachers from classrooms for this. So think about social media. It, it's different when you're in college and you're in high school and you can do all those things. Nobody really cares, but now they do. These parents are watching. And you have groups out there that are just watching public education because they want to see public education fail. And if they can, make, they can make a mountain out of a molehill, it makes their, I don't know, whatever you call it, 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 makes, it makes what they're doing seem better, you know, better about their self. We had that, not to interrupt, but we had a girl that got on there and posted something she shouldn't have. But it went to Connecticut to a, a, a group that called Tim like and said, we've seen this. What are you doing? Yeah. So, I mean, and the girl didn't even know anybody in Connecticut, but it got shared, 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 you know what I'm saying? And we were like, what? You know? It, so, name or picture of the kid, like, just using social media as a outlet for the attention. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. Just don't. Even if their name's on it, even if their picture's on it, it does not matter. Because, it, because you're their teacher and somebody knows you. Yeah. You know, you're a member of the Anderson County School family. Listen, it's a whole lot better to pick up the phone and call somebody, yeah. text them, yep, because that is a whole lot more private. Yeah. 
Great teachers are lifelong learners. We still want to be learners. You're going to grow, and if you're not growing, you're, you're stagnant. I'm getting out of time. Have a plan and a purpose for everything you do. You have to plan. If you have to plan, to plan. If you go into a classroom and you say, well, let's see what we're going to do today, you have already lost this group of kids. You better be ready for them. You have to outsmart them. Don't al great teachers don't allow themselves to be put in compromising positions. You will never be back in my class again, and I'm going to see to it. And then you go to the principal, and the principal says, No, nope, they got a 504, or they are special ed, and yeah, they'll be back in there tomorrow. <laughs> it happens. And, and you know, our, uh, <laughs> you'll never pass my class. I'm going to fail. I'm going to make sure you fail that. You know, so don't get yourself in those. Don't allow yourself to get backed into a corner, okay? Because a lot of times it goes back to, and, and your principals are there to support you, but if you put them where they can't support you, you know, you can say, listen, if that happens one more time, we're going to have a parent conference or you're going to, you're going to be put out in the hall. You can do all those things, but just don't back yourself into a corner. It's easy to do when you're mad. Yes, yes. Great teachers are reflective. When you do a lesson, don't just move on. Think about it. What can I do different? What, what went well? What, what needs to be tweaked about those things? You have to be reflective. You'll, you'll have to be reflective as this year. This year, if you're a first-year teacher, it's the hardest year you'll have, really and truly. You're going to make mistakes. Don't worry about it. Just move on. Have a desire to grow. Hopefully, sitting in this classroom may be the next director of schools for Anderson County. You've got to want to grow, and we're going to give you opportunities to grow. We, we love to uh, have people from inside our school system that becomes assistant principals, principals, coaches, all of those things. So we will give you an opportunity to grow. With this, we're working on, again, because COVID kind of shut it down, we're working on having after school uh, classes. So you'll be able to sign up and go to a class. Uh, I think we're looking at maybe three to four a year. Uh, we'll pay you $30 an hour to go to that class. If you have a special skill and you put in a proposal and you teach that class, then we're going to pay those people $200 to teach that class. Because we have a lot of knowledge here and we want to keep that knowledge growing and that's the way we can do it. We're excited about that. Yep. Use data to make decisions. That's what I said on those Wednesdays. That's not just a time for you to do busy work. Really look at that data. Miss Russell's in the back. They'll, you'll probably see her later today. She does an excellent job of, of she's, she's working through our state data right now to see how, how, we, how much we improved this year. Uh, but she will, in your classes, your coaches, uh, the great thing about Anderson County Schools, every school has an academic coach. So we have a coach that, you, that can come in and team teach with you and come in and help you do things. You have mentors here. So we want to make sure that we give you every opportunity to grow. Enjoy what you do. Again, you got to have some fun. You gotta have you, you every now and then you gotta just take five minutes to breathe. Okay. Again, have fun. There's one more. Oh. Take time for self care. My expectation is unless it's an emergency, I don't email my staff and my staff doesn't email me after eight o'clock. I have to have some time to do a, have to have some time to take care of the things my wife wants me to do, okay? But, but you have to have some time to take care of yourself, okay? Uh, I get up every morning at five o'clock and I go to CrossFit, okay? I'm an avid CrossFitter, I love it. I've been doing it for about three years, I'm not good at it, but I love it, 
and it makes me feel good. It makes you, it, now I'm sore all the time, but, but it gives you a time to self-care. The reason I started, the doctor said, if you don't do something, you're going to have a heart attack and die. I was about 40 pounds heavier than I am right now, so it does make a difference. But you have to figure out what that self-care is. If it's just walking 10 minutes, if it's just sitting alone and listening to a song, you've got to have that self-care. Because if you don't take care of yourself, you can't take care of the students. And so you have to make sure you take care of yourself. No, I think that's... So, here, here's my question. What will your story be? That's kind of my story. Uh, will you seek safe harbors, safe routes, calm harbors, or just follow the same old path? Or will you set sails for the sea of uncertainty, knowing full well that the storms and rough seas lie ahead? This is from Robert Aker. Your story must be to set sail simply because the stakes are so high. These are our students, our future. They deserve to be educated at high levels, not merely required to attend school. We want to make sure that we give them every opportunity to grow. We are in a kind of a race with, between public and private schools, charter schools, vouchers, all of that stuff. And everything, most everything I think the state does is to, to make public education look bad. And in Anderson County, people still trust us. They still love Anderson County Schools. That's where they want to send their kids to school at. We have probably four or 500 students that are out of zone, that are in other counties that come to Anderson County because we have a great school system. We want to keep doing that. But to do that, we have to grow as a group. We have to be able to stretch ourselves, and we have to be able to push our students. We want to grow, and we want to be better every year. And we are a family. Uh, we, we live together. We work together. We go, to, we go to ball games together. We go to church together. Everything we do, we're, we're a big family in Anderson County. So don't be on that island by yourself, okay? Get you a partner, get you, you, you got to have some support around you, okay? And with all these new teachers, they know we have some great, amazing teachers in every grade. And hopefully this year, you will get some time to go visit them and spend some time with them. Because my desire is at the end of this 23-24 school year, that all of you get that letter that says, welcome back for next year. You've done a great job. Okay? Any questions of me? Twenty seven days we get. Eleven. We get a hundred. Here's the thing about it. If you're sitting here and you're a brand new teacher, your pay, your pay is $5,000 more than the group that sat here last year. Okay, we want to make sure we we want to put our trust, and we want to make sure that we give you uh, a salary that you can live on. Uh, we hope to be yes. Did you get your bathroom fixed? Yes, I did. <laughs> I had to get I had to do it twice though. I listen. Don't get one of those new fangly things that says it, you don't have to have a wax ring. That other one doesn't work. It still leaks, and so I had to get that done. So, yes. My other, my other thing I love to do is farm. Uh, we had uh, about, sold about 500 dozen ears of corn this year. We have the best corn in the state. It really does. Just to let you know that. But, uh, but I stay busy all the time, but that's what I love to do. So, again, uh, I'm excited for this group to be here. I am excited of what next year holds in store. Uh, there's going to be some bumps in the road, but no, you don't have to, you don't have to, this set sail, you don't have to do it alone, okay? No, there's people alone to help you. Uh, your principal's there to help you. Your coach is there to help you. We're here to help you, okay? We're here to support you, okay? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Parrish. You're welcome. We get you.